<sighs> Good afternoon, everyone. Happy 29th to you. Um, it is that odd period between Christmas and New Year, which some people mistakenly, in my opinion, called Twixmas, um, where various things happen. We all relax, nurse a hangover, do what you do, and get ready for the new year. It's not that long a period. Um, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to try some interesting wines from my little humble collection downstairs here at my house back in Edinburgh um, and share them with you. Peter and I have given ourselves the challenge of doing three videos each in this period, and this is the first of mine. Uh, because I forgot to do ones on the Christmas bottles. Anyway, this is what I decided to open. Incidentally, this is something we stock in the shop, but this is not really to get you to buy it, and it's more just a personal opinion. So, I am a big Burgundy fan, as some of you may well know. So, it, it is may come as a shock that I have not yet tried this, which some of you will probably have drunk, which is the Bourgogne Rouge from Marquois, 2018. Now, um, for those of you who don't know, uh, in Burgundy, uh, prices are ridiculous, um, pricing themselves out of existence, which is a real shame because I think it's, in my opinion, the most emotional, intellectually stimulating, beautiful wine um, that you can have. Um, apart from, you know, however much I love port, that is just sort of immediate satisfaction. This is a mental challenge, and sometimes I want that. So, for those of you who don't know, Bourgogne is the sort of catch-all regional appellation in Burgundy um, that producers make um, when they don't want to declare their vines from the village. So basically, it's their lesser, you can quote on in inverted commas, grapes. Uh, the grapes that they haven't put into their main village cuvee, um, but they still want to release because they think it's a good representation of them. And uh, they're very, very popular, uh, often much, much cheaper because they don't have that village name on them, but they are still hallmark and a standard bearer for the quality of that producer. So a Bourgogne uh, from a producer is not only a good way to introduce you to a certain village style, because you, usually they're made from one or more villages where that producer is based, um, but it's also an affordable way to drink good Burgundy. Oh, finally. So, Marquois is a, a favorite producer of ours. I've tasted, I've never actually had a full bottle of his, um, but I've tasted a little bit of his 2017 Givry Chambertin. This wine, um, I'm assuming, he is based in Givry Chambertin. All of his reds are from there, and he has one uh, Marsanet white. Uh, so it's it's safe to assume that these vines are from Gevry Chambertin, right? So basically, with this wine, you're getting a Gevry Chambertin. It just doesn't say it on the label, because it's Gevry vines. But there's been an interesting story with this one. Um, when I first opened it, which was half two yesterday, and it's now nearly one o'clock the next day, it was extremely closed. The nose was gorgeous, and which is what you're still getting today, which is beautiful oak, buttery, vanilla-y, but it's not bright butter that you might get in a white. It's it's a very sort of smooth, creamy butter. Then you're getting the classic sort of dark cherries. And then overlaying this is a fascinating note of really sweet black currants and almost, if any of you know Chambord raspberry liqueur, it's a bit like that. So it's, it's an incredibly sweet, ripe nose, which is absolutely beautiful. But the palate The palate is a different story. Now, that's not to say that this is a bad wine. My goodness, it's not. This is to say that the 2018 vintage is taking a long time to come around. I've tasted 2017s and 19s from Burgundy. There are a lot. 2017 is fresher, it's got more acid to it, it's colder, not as hot as 2018. 2019 has a sort of more zingy, uh, diaphanous sweetness to it. It's not as thick and, you know, but it still has longevity to it. The 18s are taking a long time to come around. What I've noticed in 2018 whites and reds is that they still have this slightly dumpy, closed, not necessarily tartness, but they have this sort of weighty, muted nature to them. And it just means that 2018s are taking a longer time to come around. 2018 was hailed as this sort of turning point vintage, you know, the sort of best, best sort of conditions they've ever had, blah, blah, blah. But they always say that, don't they? With 05 and 09 and 10, they said that. Um, because it gets better every year now. But the concern now is that it gets hotter every year, not better. Anyway, the thing about 2018 wines, they're amazing wines, but in conclusion, from this wine, it's very apparent that they just need more time. However, you should buy this wine. You can drink it now, and it's absolutely lovely. But for my taste, it needs another five years. Have a good day.